Greetings students and welcome back to another video on quantum mechanics. In this lesson we're going to derive and discuss the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. In the last video we left off by defining the two operators x hat for position and p x hat for the x momentum. We're actually going to use these two operators and derive the Heisenberg uncertainty principle in this video. And in order to do that we're going to be using the generalized uncertainty principle which I actually derived a few videos back, links in the description. So according to the generalized uncertainty principle if I have two Hermitian operators a hat and b hat then the product of their uncertainties or their standard deviations must be greater than or equal to half times the magnitude of the expectation value of the commutator of a hat and b hat. Recall that the commutator is defined as a hat b hat minus b hat a hat. It's a measure of the extent to which a hat and b hat commute. Now let's apply this generalized uncertainty principle to our momentum and position operators, in which case we'll have sigma x times sigma px is greater than or equal to half times the magnitude of the expectation value of the commutator between x hat and px hat. So all we have to do in order to prove the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is to evaluate the right hand side, the commutator of x hat and px hat. Now a good idea when evaluating a commutator is to actually apply it to a dummy function or a dummy vector because after all a commutator is still an operator. Applying a dummy function or vector like f will help you keep things in check and not make bad mathematical mistakes. And in the end what you can do is you can take out your dummy function or vector and just be left with an operator that's operating on it after you've done all your algebra. So let's start by expanding this out using the definition of the commutator. Keep in mind that the second operator isn't operating on the first one, it's operating on the first operator combined with the actual function. So I'm just going to write parentheses to prevent confusion. Now let's use the actual values of the operators. And this is what we'll get. We'll use the product rule because we're taking the derivative of x times f, in which case this is what we will have. Now these two terms are going to cancel because they're exactly the same and dx by dx is just 1. So it turns out that our commutator expression is negative h bar over i times f which is i h bar times f if you move the imaginary number up to the numerator. So therefore the commutator between x hat and px hat is i h bar if you ignore the f's on both sides. Now let's substitute this into the uncertainty principle for x and p. When we do that we'll see that i h bar is just a constant and the expectation value of a constant is still just that constant. So we can simplify our uncertainty principle to the following. If we now take the magnitude of i h bar then i h bar is just a complex number with an imaginary component. So the magnitude will just be equal to the magnitude of that imaginary component. It'll just be equal to h bar. So finally we'll have sigma x times sigma p x is greater than or equal to h bar over 2. And this is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. That there is always a trade-off between the precision on your position and the precision on your momentum. A particle with a precisely defined position must necessarily have an imprecisely defined momentum and a particle with a precisely defined momentum must necessarily have an imprecisely defined position according to this inequality. One way to explain the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is to think of wave particle duality. If I have a pure single particle system which I'll represent with a bump on the wave function then it's fairly easy for me to localize that particle's position because its position is well defined. If you were to ask me where the bump is, the bump representing the particle, then I can tell you quite precisely. So that means that the position here is well defined. As a result, the uncertainty in position will be very small for a pure particle system for the bump wave function. 
However, if you were to ask me the wavelength of this particle, the wavelength of the bump, then I can't really give you an answer because the wavelength is very poorly defined. There's no waves for me to look at. But what if I have a pure wave that's given by this wave function? Well, in this case, if you ask me the wavelength of this wave function, then I can easily provide an answer just by using the distance between two peaks. As a result, the wavelength of a wave function representing a pure wave is very well defined. However, if you were to ask me the position of this wave, then I can't really give you an answer because the position is very poorly defined. The wave is just everywhere, it's not in one particular location. So in that case, the uncertainty on the position of the wave is large. Now you might say that I'm supposed to be talking about a trade-off between position and momentum, but here I'm talking about a trade-off between position and wavelength. Well, yes, but it turns out that the wavelength lambda and the momentum p of the system are closely related to each other via the de Broglie formula. So if my lambda is well defined, then by this equation, it stands to reason that my momentum is also well defined. So in the second case, the uncertainty on momentum is small. But in the first case, where my wavelength was poorly defined, then by the de Broglie formula, my momentum is also poorly defined. And therefore, the uncertainty on momentum is large. So both of these situations illustrate that a precisely defined position necessarily means a poorly defined momentum and vice versa. And this is a more intuitive, physics-based explanation of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. But there's an alternative, more mathematical explanation, and it goes something like this. If I have a wave function given by psi of x comma t, then I can use this wave function to determine the probability I'll find a particle between two positions x equals a and x equals b. So this wave function gives me the likelihood of finding a particle between certain positions. It's a wave function in position space. But what if I didn't care about position? What if I wanted to find the probability that a particle's momentum lies between p equals pa and p equals pb? Well, I can still use the wave function psi, but I can't use it as is. I need to make a modification and convert the wave function in position space to a wave function in momentum space, phi of p comma t. In order to make this conversion, I need to perform a Fourier transform. So the wave function in momentum space is the Fourier transform of the wave function in position space. And if I want to go back, I can use the inverse Fourier transform. Now, if my position is precisely specified, my wave function in position space will look very close to a delta function. It'll look like a spike. But when I look at the wave function in momentum space, it looks like a wave. Because when I do the Fourier transform of a delta function, I get a sinusoidal wave. As a result, I won't be able to precisely specify the momentum because in momentum space, the wave function is this oscillatory wave and it's impossible for me to pinpoint an exact value of momentum since the wave function, which is related to the probability density function, is so spread out. So in this case, the variation or uncertainty in x is small, but because of the nature of Fourier transforms, the variation or uncertainty in momentum must be large. On the other hand, if my momentum is precisely specified, my wave function in momentum space will look like a delta function. It will look like a spike. But when I look at the wave function in position space, it looks like a wave. Because now the inverse Fourier transform of a delta function is a sinusoidal wave. As a result, I won't be able to precisely specify the position, because in position space, the wave function is this sinusoidal oscillation, and it's impossible for me to pinpoint an exact value of position since the wave function is so spread out. So now, the variation or uncertainty in P is small, but because of the nature of Fourier transforms and inverse Fourier transforms, the uncertainty on X must be large. So the Heisenberg uncertainty principle can therefore be thought of as a consequence of the mathematical nature of Fourier transforms. 
the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is emphatically not a statement about our inability to precisely measure things. In fact, there's a common misconception that associates the uncertainty principle with practical measurement constraints, and that misconception goes something like this. If I want to measure the position of a particle, say an electron, then in order to make an accurate measurement I would need to shine lots of very high energy light on that electron. So if I shine a lot of light, my electron's position can be determined fairly precisely, which means that the uncertainty on my measurement of the electron's position will be low. However, by shining a lot of high energy light, I'm going to excite the electron and make it very difficult to measure momentum because the electron's going crazy, so the uncertainty on my measurement of momentum will be large. Now, on the other hand, if I shine very little light, then yes, my electron probably won't get excited and I'll be able to measure the momentum without the electron going crazy. However, because there's hardly any light traveling to that electron, it's very difficult for me to tell where the electron is. So, as a result, in this second scenario, my uncertainty on the measurement of momentum is small, but the uncertainty on the measurement of position is large. Now, this whole phenomenon that I've described is true. By measuring a system, we need to interact with that system, which results in our measurements being worse. However, the misconception occurs when people equate this phenomenon with the uncertainty principle. This is not the uncertainty principle, it's something called the observer effect. The uncertainty principle, as I just mentioned, is a consequence of mathematics. It can be thought of as a consequence of the nature of Fourier transforms, which is a mathematical construct. In fact, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle was derived from the generalized uncertainty principle. So another way to think of it is to think of it as a consequence of the generalized uncertainty principle, which was actually derived purely from mathematics if you watch my video on its derivation. Now once again, the Heisenberg uncertainty principle is a consequence of mathematics. It doesn't say anything about observers and observers having to interact with particles. It's a statement on the nature of quantum mechanical particles, which arises from mathematics. It doesn't even say anything about measurements. Anyway, that does it for this video. In the next lesson, I'll solve a problem involving wave functions that should put everything together. I'll finish off by thanking the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher. I've linked my Patreon account in the description so you can check it out. So that's it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.